Hi guys, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. So I'm really excited to do this video. I know you guys will probably appreciate this one. I have started collecting a short list of movies that I've seen, never seen people talk about. And I really wanted to mention them to you guys because I don't think anyone has actually asked me about any of these movies, maybe one or two once, um, out of being on YouTube for nearly two years. I don't know how long it's been now. <laughs> um, I'm really surprised that no one said anything. Without further ado, let's get into the list. And there's only four. Um, but these are must-see disturbing films that fucked me up. So I hope they'll like destroy you as well. <laughs> the first film is Dance Around the Dark. Have you guys heard of this film? Do you like Bjork? This film is fucked up in every single fucking way. So it is labeled as a crime drama musical, but what you aren't expecting is the most fucking intense ride of your life. The movie is about Bjork, who has moved to America with her son. She gets herself in a really horrific situation, and the ways that she can get out of it is singing about it. And there's these amazing breakout songs that are just so lovely. Tom York, hello, Radiohead fans unite. It is a beautiful movie, shot really well, it's such an incredible story. It has a really high rating, so I'm really surprised more people don't talk about it, but it's also also completely terrifying and frightening and disturbing as hell. It's also a movie by Lars von Trier. I'm never gonna say that right. But obviously his other works are quite popular. There was a lot of controversy while shooting the film because Bjork and him do not get along and they say some really hurtful things about each other in the public about working together. But I'm glad that they managed to get through it because this is a piece of art. And I recommend picking this one up on DVD um, or Blu-ray or whatever you can find it on because it is something that you need to have in your collection. I'd probably give that film an eight out of 10. Very good, very disturbing, super epic, stays with you for years. The next movie I wanna talk about is is a movie by Larry Clark, one of the lesser talked about ones. It's called Bully. And you may have seen this before because I think at one point it was streaming on Netflix. So please check out your Netflix before you go out trying to find it somewhere else. It's a lot like Ken Park, kids, and I also would say Gummo. Yeah, it's just about a bunch of kids and they're like fucked up on drugs and, um, about one in particular who was getting bullied by someone else in their group and they're kind of sick of this guy's shit um, because he's the bully and they're gonna teach him a lesson but uh, there's really awful sexual conduct in it and um, yeah it's just very raw. What I like about all of Larry Clark's stuff is it is, is super raw but I find like this one is just it's almost like so low budget, it's just so real. Um, and also stars the guy from Mean Girls, which I think is so weird, but it's a really well done film, I think, in my personal taste. Uh, and I found it really disturbing. Check it out. I would give this one a seven out of 10. Speaking on disturbing, my favorite director of all time, which some of you guys might know this, is Todd Solondz. And he does the most disturbing, darkest dramas, I don't even know what to say because there's like a hint of like, it's not comedy. It is like in a category of its own. Some of his well-known films are Happiness, Welcome to the Dollhouse and Storytelling. Uh, but my favorite film by him will always be Palindromes. Oh my God. If you want to talk about disturbing like films that you're just like sitting there the whole time going, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like that is me during that whole film every time I watch it. And it is a film I could never show anyone else because they freak out. They would freak out so hardcore. Um, it is about a girl who gets pregnant um, and she kind of flees. But the way it's told is so unique. So pretty much every chapter is told by a different actress, but it's still the same character. And that's something I want to tell you guys before getting into it, uh, because I think that if you didn't know that, it gets a little bit confusing. Um, the variety of actors and actresses they get is so clever, and I really do believe it's meant to be picturing that it could happen to anyone, but also to do it in such a nice experimental way that hasn't been done before. I praise you, Todd Salons. This film is great and it's disturbing. All the characters are amazing, amazing. And you'll just, the whole time you'll be like, what the fuck? Mumish sunshine, you'll just love it. And I really, really want you guys to watch this film. It's one of my favorite films. Um, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10. I fucking love this film and I really want you guys to go see it. If you haven't heard of it, check it out. Palindromes by Todd Solondz, A+. The last film is a film that you could probably find the easiest out of all of these. It is a film called Hard Candy. And the reason I wanna talk about Hard Candy, although a lot of you guys probably have seen this movie, I think that a lot of people don't really talk about it. And it makes me curious to, if people haven't seen it or if people just don't like talking about it. This film actually stars Ellen Page and Patrick Wilson. It's one of those films where I don't want to tell you what happens because it kind of is like a little bit of a, a little, 
I don't know, ride, but I will tell you kind of the idea around it. So Ellen Page is a young girl um, who has met a guy online, the guy being Patrick Wilson, and she goes to meet up with him in public. And what transpires from there is horrific and intense and jaw dropping and the way it's done is almost like an action type thrilling experience but it's also quite disturbing when you think about what is actually going on and I think it's one of those films where it's so easy to get caught up in the action of like the cat and mouse kind of thing where you forget the bigger picture of what is actually happening and I think it's really disturbing and interesting for that reason. The film was shot in 18 days and it was actually shot way under a normal budget just because they didn't want the studio to ask for any changes because it was such a controversial topic. They wanted to keep everything as it was. Uh, this film is done really well though. I really like re-watching this film. I've seen it about six times. I think it's like a really interesting rewatch. I just love seeing how everything plays out and although after it you don't have that reveal kind of aspect, um, you do always have the thrill. The thrill is always in this film and I think that they've caught that and they've kept the tension so well. I like this film. I think you should watch it. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different. It might not be like a huge fucking grand epic event but I really wanted to just talk to you guys really quickly about some movies that I really hope that you guys would enjoy and that you might want to put on your to watch list this weekend. I hope you're all having a great day. Let me know if you've seen any of these films down below and what you thought about them. Maybe give me your scores for all four and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky. Bye.